There we go. Dude, thanks for being on, Joey. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. No, it's, it's always... I'm very look, looking looking forward to a conversation, <clears throat> relaxed conversation. <laughs> Growing up as a like punk rock kid, it's always fun. Like You follow bands and you see them, you hear their music, and to have like... Uh, my friend Matt, he was a lead singer in like this little hardcore band. And then I had uh, uh-huh. Rick Thorne on. And so he's, you yeah. know, not only the bike rider, but lead singer in a band. And so uh, I followed yeah, your, I followed your page because of a meme I saw. Somebody reposted your meme or something. And I followed. Oh, your, yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, that's hilarious. And so I followed it. And then oh, funny. I was like, oh, he's a lead singer in a band. And then I'm like. Oh, it's the Briggs. I put it together now. That's cool. Like your your social media page, like for some reason I disconnected that from like the band. It just kind of was like, this is just a funny this is just a funny dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like memes, that's for sure. <laughs> I definitely communicate a lot through memes. But yeah, that is that is that's funny that that came from a very roundabout way. Have you seen the band before? Did you ever see the Briggs? I didn't see back in them. the day or anything. I listened to them, but I, no. I yeah, just you know whatever I can get on iTunes and whatnot, and you know, and YouTube and nice all that. But uh, uh, nothing, cool. nothing that um, I haven't seen anything live or anything like that. Yeah, right on. I wish I could see Sick, more live shows. Bro. I think the last live show I actually. Well, don't we all? <laughs> dude the world needs it right now man the world needs it yeah like that's that's actually one thing i thought about a lot is um all this tension and like just built up things that are going on in the world and how freeing and relaxing things like live music shows are no matter what your jam is like it could be justin timberlake it could be adele or it could yeah. be the briggs it could be you know, H2O, it could be heavy metal, you name it, just go all the way down. Just that release of going and having fun with a bunch of people in a small room and stuff and enjoying the music. For some reason, it just brings people together and relieves a lot of tension. 100%. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it is something that is sorely missed by, by the broader public for sure. So when when and, did you? Uh, hopefully it'll be coming back. I mean, there are certain areas that are, you know, Australia is doing shows again, and there are there are areas of the world that are starting to get back to kind of you know quasi normal. Yeah, Florida. Florida Florida's like a different country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was gonna say like when when did this whole like music journey start for you as far as like you know getting into bands and. All that good stuff. Um, teenagehood mainly. Uh, started a lot of different bands with my brother, and we, we we did a lot of different projects together, just kind of finding our way through the music, uh, you know, through different different genres and different bands and stuff. And then you know, just kind of one thing led to another, and we we wound up doing this project and and i think i was around like 19 or maybe 20 when we first got signed and started like full-time touring and stuff like that so it was pretty early on um yeah and then and that was kind of that was basically how i got i mean like i i actually started out on drums that was my first instrument that i played um and i and then i kind of made a transition to the front but that was actually where I, that's where I kind of started was doing drums and, um, but yeah. And then, you know, it's been, it's been an interesting journey indeed. So do you know how many bands it took before you start, like you started to see success? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I guess it was like, it was probably about five maybe. So it, 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 what you know, it's, it, the lines kind of blur a little bit because you know bands sort of morph into another band and morph into another band sort of. Um, so it wasn't so like extremely clear cut. Like it was this band and then this band. You know, it's like kind of like we're doing this and then like oh one guy leaves and we kind of change our name and now we're this. You know what I mean? So like 
Um, but it was probably about, it was probably about five bands. Um, and you know, we, we did a lot of, we did a lot of, uh, playing around just like the LA circuit at first, you know, just doing like the LA clubs. And, um, and one, one thing that I feel like kind of led to the success of this band was just that, you know, when we were, when we were starting out, not even necessarily when we were starting out, but when we were, you know, still what I would consider a baby band, we just played like every opportunity we could like backyard parties, you know, some random show at someone's house or at a club or at a bar or whatever. We just, we just played and played and played and played, you know, and just, we just not only just for the purpose of, of building an audience or something, but also just, you know, working at getting tight as a band and working out the dynamics of musicianship, you know, and, and, and just improving there. I think honestly, that's something that sort of lacks, a lot, you know, p- people kind of move a little bit, faster these days or, or attempt to move a lot faster in terms of taking a band from zero to 60. You know, I think that there's a lot, lot less incubation than, than there used to be, you know, and that was something I feel that that was a really, uh, a, a, a really good part, uh, you know, our very uh, successful part of it was that incubation period of really just figuring each other out, figuring out, you know, uh, playing together and and also just you you kind of develop what you're doing at, at the same time yeah and those steps are super important with everything like uh and i think so, like like you said nowadays they can just kind of you can kind of skip steps i guess with youtube i don't know how it works in the music industry as much you know they see a little bit of success on youtube that somebody throws it out there and then they just start doing it that way which is cool to have the other avenue but isn't live i mean where do you guys make your money off live shows off you know recordings i mean with this digital stuff how how do people make their money um well it's not very easy um it's not it's 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 a that's kind of a loaded question but i mean there there is some uh i mean i'd say that the majority of of bands make a a fair amount of their like percentage wise of their income comes from live shows and from merchandise. Uh, I feel like it did, you know, sales is, is definitely, it has taken a little bit of a backseat to that. Um, it's sort of more of a vehicle to, to driving, you know, uh, live audiences and things like that to shows. But, um, but I, th- but there are, you know, different, different revenue streams, you know, in terms of, in terms of sales and in terms of, royalties and stuff like that but you know i mean you got to be you got to be really selling a lot to make it to be you know living off of off of music you know it's it's not it's not you know not every band is just is um is rolling rolling in the dough just because they you know have sold a couple of thousand records or something like that you know even i mean i I, I know bands that are even doing really well that still, you know, they still have to have day jobs and stuff like that because it, it you know, it takes, it takes a bit of, takes quite a bit of time, you know, to really, to really, uh, to, to make that a, a living for sure. And some, and, and it's not something that, uh, you know, probably 85% of bands achieve as far as living off their, their money, uh, living off of their, their band. Well, how long have you been in it? That that brings up an interesting question. Um, being in the industry, I, I suppose for maybe uh, like 20, 20 plus years, um, it got into to you know I, I started doing it more uh, full time when I was still in my late teens and early twenties. So that was. That was kind of when I uh, I started. So yeah, it does it it it's been it's been a, a long road, and and you know and and when and I and I it's it's also sort of it's evolved too. You know, it's I I in the last ten years I definitely have not toured nearly as much as I did uh, earlier on. You know, with having kids and 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 things like that, it's not. I don't. My life is not. Uh, at all what it was when I was in my 20s. I mean, I was gone nine, 10 months out of the year on tour. Um, so yeah, you know, it's it sort of, it, it evolves. You got to kind of 
figure out where to go and what to do. And, you know, and I've found different avenues of, of continuing to make music. If it's from, you know, producing and uh, songwriting and I have a few different musical projects going on now, uh, bands wise that it's somewhat, you know, it's like right now it's, it's funny because I, I've, I've started in the last, year i've started two musical projects with friends and stuff like that you know and it, it's really it is sort of up in the air as far as where where does it where does it go from here what do we do how do we do it but it doesn't really matter at this point it's sort of just like create stuff make shit and um you know have fun with it because there's really no there's no pressure <laughs> so you might as well just do cool stuff that you like it's funny you don't find any pressure in that like with everything shut down and no live shows and i know that's like especially listen to your music that's your jam like if you listen to if you listen to the briggs if you listen to your acoustic stuff with uh the back alley lecture right that's the name of it i don't i'm we're doing mm-hmm. an accident. but if you listen yeah, to it back alley lecture yeah it's very sing-alongable so like you just want to yell and and screen like you know you want to yell along with the band like that's what you want to do when you mm-hmm. listen to it and yeah. so yours is set up for i can imagine an incredible live show and then not having those live shows anymore and you're still just like yeah there's no pressure man i just create stuff well i mean i mean in a way it's like i i i will agree i will say that you know the music that i create definitely is 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 intended for sing along, you know, vibes. Like that, that's definitely something that I've always, um, that's something I've always gravitated towards. As far as like you know, things that are that are like that a Greek a group would be singing versus just a person. And um, so yes, the, in that respect, indeed. I mean, there is there's there's very little that can replace the energy of being in a room full of people singing along to a song for sure. Um, whether you're creating that or even just being a, a participant, it's, it's a real special moment. Um, but you know, it's like at the same time, uh, this is a, you know, I, or very early on in the whole, on, in this whole circumstance, I just had to make a decision to be kind of Zen about it and, and figure out what I could do that would be really productive and what I could do that would be uh, worthwhile to myself and to my sanity um, and so that was, that's kind of where I'm at. So I don't, I don't really have, I mean, sure. You know, I, I, every once in a while I'll post a live photo and stuff like that and, and be somewhat forlorn about it or whatever. But, um, but overall I've, I've just kind of come to terms with where we're at and utilize in right now, really just the, the utilization of the time right now is just to, to create stuff and record stuff and so that's that's uh, just sort of been my main focus right now um so you know and and once once things really do start to kind of roll again and if it you know if and when and how and who knows what you know how that whole circumstance will play out but it you know being as prepared for it as possible and having new stuff and having you know having a really great uh, product to to show people is sort of is is important you know so that's that's just definitely something I've I've um, I've focused my attention on and you know and it helps to just be able to create stuff with people that I really like and that are like really good really good friends of mine so you know my um, I mean back at back alley lectured Greg uh, my partner in that hit him and I I mean we're best of friends so that that's really easy for us to to work on stuff together and then you know my other project i have going uh, vintage war which is uh, a few dudes including uh, derek who also played in the briggs and you know we're all just bros so it's just like playing music with friends and and uh you know and without any kind of weird drama or ego, egotistical things that maybe, I don't know, some people run into, uh, it's, it makes it pretty easy to, to, to work on and, and not feel like I'm necessarily missing out on anything. It's also, you know, one thing, if, 
it it would maybe feel also worse if like if you were looking looking you know in from the outside going oh man look at everyone doing all that cool stuff and i'm stuck here at home it's like well, every you know everyone's kind of in the same boat so it's not you know what i mean so like there's that aspect of of kind of feeling like you're missing out is it doesn't really apply or exist so i suppose that 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 might be a part of it too well, I really dig how, like, I mean, I dig it. I dig how you've made use of your time. Like a, any sort of speed bump that comes across your way, it seems like you're going to find a way to make it work. In your, like, it does, it's, not even a, it's not even a second thought. It's just like that's what you do. You, something happens, okay, well, I'm going to use this as a positive to improve my craft and get better at this area or that area or whatever it is. Well, I mean, it was rocky, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't say it was like a, and it was like overnight, you know, I mean, I definitely feel like I went through a lot of different phases with this whole thing and definitely went through like, you know, an, an exceptional spectrum of, of emotions on it. But, um, but, you know, that was, that was something that I, I definitely wanted to, to do was to be able to look back and be like, sweet, dude, I, I really made good use of my time instead of just, you know, what the fuck happened those last two years and what, 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 you know, what changed is anything, you know what I mean? So like, I just didn't, I didn't want to look back and feel like it was a total waste of time. So there's, there's so much that can be done. You just have to, you know, reconfigure and, and, uh, and recalibrate where, where you focus your attention. Well, that's the, I mean, that's the most important thing because it really is outside of your control or my control or anybody's control as to the decisions that are made and the process that's going down, whether Mm -hmm. you believe right or wrong lockdowns or mask or whatever you believe, whatever it is you're believing in, that's irrelevant because you're not really in control of the way it's going to be handled at this point. So like you have to kind of work around whatever, those are the things that are most worrisome. Those are the things that worry people the most and get them most stressed out is the things that they can't control. And to be mm-hmm. able to let go of it like that will probably just let more of your creative juices flow. Yeah, and I mean, and there's other aspects too of, of life that, that you know, do carry that burden of stress and things like that. I mean, you know, the schooling side of things with, with, you know, with my kids and stuff like that has been, has definitely been, has definitely been stressful and stuff like that. And so it's not all roses for sure. And there's definitely aspects that, that have taken that, that burden uh, more than others. But, you know, at the same time, ever since, you know, one thing uh, that I've also just taken into account with this whole, circumstances just that you know i i'm doing okay you know and i know that i and i see the uh i see the the difficulty that a lot of people are having you know in terms of financially or or you know career wise or whatever uh whether whatever it may be just based on the circumstance and the fact that it has not you know totally destroyed my my life it i just every day I'm grateful for that you know that it that it did not affect me in that in in the way that it affected other um others because I wasn't in necessarily something that was too sensitive to to it you know I didn't own a restaurant I didn't own a boutique or something that you know has been shut down for over a year so um those kind of those kind of things also just you know are are in my opinion, just very important to always keep in focus. It's just like, okay, well, where are you at? And you're doing okay. You know, it's, even though it's stressful and there are certain aspects of it that suck, but you know, there's definitely people have been hit a lot harder by it. So I'm, I'm always, I'm always very grateful that, that, you know, that I, I wasn't, that it did, you know, that wasn't, that wasn't something that uh, I, that I was, greatly affected by obviously there were definitely things that um changed clearly but you know i still got a roof over my head and uh, you know i'm healthy as and i you know haven't been sick at all in this entire this whole period so grateful for that but you and you 
if I, I may be wrong, but you diversify yourself inside the music industry anyway, right? By doing other things other than just the bands, correct? That's that's true, and I mean yes, and that that does that is a a a helpful aspect of it too. Is that you know, if one project is kind of put on the back burner for one reason or another, or something without with, with you know outside of my control, based on other people I work with, um, there's always something I can pivot towards and, and focus more attention on. So yeah, that is that is nice to somewhat be diversified within my own career which is nice because it always kind of gives an opportunity to be to be uh busy and constantly be working on something yeah and that's all i don't know your involvement in it but i saw your post about the documentary as well um which looks super rad like the cover photo makes you like really want to watch it immediately. Like I, I went on, I was like, now I got to see if it's, and I, I actually saw, I was like, I can't find it anywhere. And then I saw your comment below. Yeah. Somebody's question about streaming. I was like, Oh man. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I wasn't, I, I wasn't the one that created it, but I mean, we basically, uh, a, a, a buddy of mine, we we kind of became friends through the music. Uh, he he's a he's a director, and we actually met because he had a feature that he was putting together, and he wanted to use one of my songs for it. And um, and so, anyways, we we sorted that out, and then he was he was from uh, Massachusetts, and he moved out to L.A. and we uh, and we started hanging out here and there, and you know, and he's just he's a really brilliant uh, filmmaker and, you know, he, and, and a fan of the band. So anytime we were kind of working on different projects and stuff like that, he was asked to be a fly on the wall and kind of capture some footage and stuff. And so it kind of started out like that. And, uh, and he actually did one of my videos as well. He did the uh, sun will shine um, or the summer shine uh, video. And he directed that. And then, we did a, a tour a few years back and again, he just says like, Hey, you know, I think I could tag along with you guys and just get some footage and, and, you know, and just kind of capture a little bit of the day in the life. Uh, and, uh, and so, and, and so he did that. And so over the years, he's kind of got some footage of us recording. He's got some footage of us on tour and, and he pieced together this really fun film of just like, you know, just kind of, of just, just dudes, on the road and just doing stuff like, you know, it's nothing wild or crazy or, you know what I mean? It's like, we're, we're not like, it's not like a Motley Crue documentary or something like that. It's just, but it's cool. It's just real life. It's just kind of well, the life of just being in a van with the other guys and staying at people's houses and stuff. I mean, it's just, it's fun, you know? And, and I feel like it's, 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 uh, it's fun and relatable and, and you know, I'm, it's, it's again, sort of feel biased because I mean, it's fun to watch your experiences and look back at them, especially because a lot of it, like I don't really necessarily remember exact incidents that, that were, that were caught on, on film just because he did a pretty good job just sort of tucking himself away. Um, but I think that, you know, I think it is something that people will find kind of fun to watch. Um, but yeah, he so he just he pieced this thing together and uh, started started uh, submitting it, you know, in the different uh, film festival circuits and stuff. And it's getting picked up by a couple, and uh, it's really cool. I'm really excited for people to see it. I think it'll be, I think it's a it's a fun experience for people to kind of see. And I think you know, so many people these days have you know similar experiences be it with their own band or watching other bands and stuff and kind of getting to know bands or whatever. And so you, you, it's, uh, it's fun to kind of see that, that experience of just sort of like a, you know, just dudes like traveling around the country and, and playing shows and sleeping in parking lots or wherever else, we, you know, whatever else is in there. That's more fun than the Motley Crue one though, in my opinion, like that's something that interests me more <laughs> to see. But to, I mean, to see the real life of what, like, what it is yeah. to like make a band work. Like, you know, you're not the Motley Crue, so you have to work yeah. that much harder to make a living, to do your craft, and you love it. 
but that's what that's what I think more I, I mean I would think more people so speaking from my experience wanting to see it myself that that's what draws me yeah to it. that's that's the sort of thing that I want to see and, and learn and like I can take little things from your experience in a band and apply them to my life and my goals and what I'm looking at as far as uh, things I like to do like this podcast or anything else and improve it off of yeah. watching you guys go through your thing as a band so that's i just find it fascinating to see the actual real side yeah, it, of life for sure i mean hey i mean like any band like any band that i like i would love to just kind of see that that uh that experience of just them doing their thing you know and kind of get a little bit of a behind the scenes sort of look at stuff i mean that's just that's just fun no matter you know any band that, that you you know are into or or whatever it would definitely be a fun experience to be able to have that sort of, you know, eye eye into their lives and stuff like that. So it is pretty cool. Did you like you said already that you didn't really notice some of the spots in there? You've obviously seen it, right? The final thing. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, he um, he uh, actually did a, a private screening for us, which was really cool, um, and I didn't really know what to expect. Um, but it, it was, yeah, so he's, he kind of got the four of us together at, at this really cool spot up in the, in the Hollywood Hills, at a, at a friend's pad. And it was like outside, you know, cause this was during COVID time. So it was just like, just like, uh, you know, up against the wall and we were all kind of spread out in this yard and watching this thing. And it was really cool. It was definitely, it was, it, it was, it was enjoyable to watch, you know, and it was, and I, I definitely, I, I think, you know, it's, it's a tough, um, that's that, you know, that's a lot, it's a lot of work to put something like that together. So I definitely appreciate that he, you know, he took that time to really find, find the, the joy in kind of creating this, this, uh, this timepiece for us, you know, for nothing else. I mean, it's a pretty cool thing to look back at and to be able to see, you know, 10 years down the line and or 20 30 years you know just watch this video of ourselves it's like a little home video you know <laughs> if nothing else <laughs> yeah and your kids get to see it you know and your kids will get to see it like well, yeah you could be dead and gone and your kids will have that home video you know of of all the stuff dad yeah. needs to get into that i mean that's a pretty rad thing to have yeah indeed indeed and i don't think there's anything too incriminating in there i'm pretty sure it's <laughs> I think, pretty clean pretty clean <laughs> It's pretty clean. <laughs> it's pretty clean. That's what I was going to Again, it's no Motley Crue documentary. Is it, is That's is it for weird, sure. Is it weird watching yourself on the can like in that documentary and set up and cut and clipped and stuff to be able to watch yourself from the other side like the way other people would see it? Um yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like I feel like I'm sort of used to that just from doing interviews and from doing, you know, seeing videos of, of footage and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, it's still, it's still funny. Like, like I said, it's it. Some of the moments, it's 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 interesting to literally feel like you're watching something for the first time, even though you were there and you said a thing or someone said a thing, and you know. Some of those moments, I, maybe I was drunk, but it's not just because I was like blacked out the whole time. It was just, you know, it's like, do you recall every single th every conversation you have on a daily basis? You know, so like, it's just funny to watch something. You're like, wow, I don't even remember that moment. Like weird. Like that's so bizarre that like that's just, like wasn't even my in my memory, but it was something that I did, something that I had that I had, that I experienced. But you know, so. Yeah, it's 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 cool to see that. I, I that was probably some of my most in you know the parts I enjoyed the most were the parts that were kind of just new to me completely. <laughs> <laughs> new to you, but it's like you saying it. That is kind of wild, man. And it, yeah, <laughs> I mean, but and to be a band, I can only imagine like there's people that want to even with a small amount of success. There's a bunch of people that want to come up and talk to you, and so I can see where you forget those conversations completely. Like you've talked to so many people, and like you said, you do interviews you do stuff and you're like, I don't remember that at all. Like life's going by at a hundred miles an hour for me. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You know, and, and it's that, that's always, you know, that's always, um, a, a difficult, uh, aspect too, of being in a band, 
um, because, you know, sometimes people take offense to that too, in terms of like not remembering someone's name or not remembering someone's face. And I'm, I mean, I'm pretty good at remembering faces. I'm almost uh, like, that's something that I'm really good at, but you know, it sometimes doesn't happen, you know, and definitely not with names. God, no, <laughs> can't remember names for, for the life of me, but, but, um, but you know, so but people will sometimes be like, you don't remember me, do you? And it's like, uh, but you know, like you said, it's, there's a lot of people and it's and there's a lot of moments and it's not someone trying to be a dick or is trying to be like you know i'm a rock star i don't remember you it's just like sometimes it just doesn't you know just there and gone you know <laughs> but you know so yeah there's there there, I, there that is always that always does bum me out when someone is like thinks that i'm trying to like you know brush them off or or be be a dick by you know not remembering them or something like that but sometimes it's just just isn't there you know i did i it's think gone. <laughs> i guess that's a weird thing in my mind i just can't wrap my head around getting offended like hey man i met joey i mean even doing this podcast i wouldn't expect you to remember my name like a few like a month from now a week from now two weeks. <laughs> like if you didn't you'd be like oh yeah yeah i think i did a thing with him i i wouldn't get offended at all because you're just a human being that <laughs> you know you play guitar you're in a big band you've got a lot of things going on in life like you know what i mean it's it's everybody's like that everybody goes through i mean the person who gets mad at you for forgetting their name i bet you they forgot somebody's name you know in the past like yeah they that's just true. Blow by them. That's so true. it's a weird thing to to get for me anyway but like i said i can't speak for everybody i think yeah maybe some people like your band so much they want to be tied to it in some sort of way like you're I guess when you achieve some sort of fame, people put a pedestal up there and they want to be a, like a part of that. They love your music and they want to be a part of it. And so if you forget their name, maybe it's an insult. I don't know. I can't get in the, like right. totally get inside the mind of it, but um, to bring the human aspect into it, like Joey's just a human being, man, that makes music, <laughs> you know, that forgets people's names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. So what's next for you guys? Like what's next for you? Um, the different projects that you have going on, like what, what are you lining up in the future? Um, right now, actually like in the next month, um, we are my, the project that I, that I have uh, vintage war, which is like a hardcore uh, punk band um, is getting ready to go in the studio to record our first EP. So we are, we actually even tonight have a rehearsal. So we're, we're basically gearing, gearing up to do that. Uh, so really excited about that with the next couple of weeks. And yeah, so we'll be, we'll be putting out um, like a six song EP sometime this year. And then, you know, uh, with back alley lecture, we, we have been doing a lot of like, piecing out doing different, you know, singles and stuff like that whenever we, whenever we uh, get stuff together. But that too, probably at some point we'll actually put some, like a more, something a little bit more comprehensive together. But as of right now, we've just been really just focusing on just releasing song by song. Um, yeah. And then I've got um, an artist that I've, I've been working with. Uh, her name is, uh, Sophia Zella, she is uh, actually in Australia right now doing some shows with uh, an artist named Psycho, uh, opening up for her, and um, and we've been working on some new new material for her as well. She's got she's got a lot of great stuff going on because she's just a you know a, a real powerhouse um, chick. I mean, she's just she's got. She's got a lot of great talent. She's a really great singer. She's a great violinist, and um, and great songwriter. So we've been we've been doing a bunch of co-writes, and we'll be releasing more stuff this year. Um, I produced a few tracks for her last year, and um, so yeah, you know, and and there's just been a lot of kind of things hovering around the horizon, and and just just trying to right now, you know. Like I said, since there's, I have a lot of, uh, you know, balls in the air. I right now like Vintage War 
we're we're gearing up for the studio so that's sort of where all my attention is and that's sort of what i've been focusing on because we're ready to go and we're geared up and and uh and i'm excited about that because i think it's something that i that's something that i've been missing that's something i've been sort of lacking in in terms of just like really being able to scream and yell and be really super aggressive and loud so that's that's something that i've been uh wanting to wanting to do so uh very excited about that and i think it's uh it's gonna be it's gonna be something that that's gonna take people a little bit by surprise just in terms of because it's you know i mean the brakes are heavy but this is this is heavier than that so it's it's um yeah it'll be fun that's pretty awesome. Are you are you uh, singing in it, playing guitar? What what's your role in the? Yeah. both just just singing. No, I'm not playing guitar in this because it's I it's like it's out of my wheelhouse in terms of how to play this. I'm I'm like a rhythm guitar player, you know, like I could play chords and stuff, but this this is a little bit more. Um, a little bit more noodly, I guess, or a little, you know, a little bit more skill, a little out, outside of my skill level in terms of <laughs> these kind of songs. And also, it's just like I, I really wanted to, the the project. I really did want to focus on just like, you know, I really just wanted to it to be super balls to the wall vocalist kind of thing. I didn't really want to play guitar at the same time. Do you find it fun just to be like just to do the vocals? and run around and scream and yell. Yeah, I mean I like I enjoy doing both. I mean there are times where it's kind of cool to sort of hide behind the instrument a little bit and to be able to sort of you almost kind of have a little bit more um, freedom to lay back when when you have something else that you're doing at the same time. Uh, but at the same but you know, so there is I there is an aspect of me that likes to play an instrument while singing at the same time. But um, I definitely am I am definitely looking forward to trying this out because I definitely I think it's going to be a lot more aggressive in your face kind of thing. So we'll see. Coming back, you know, from not playing live shows for a super long time, I'm also very curious to see how winded. I will be, you know, coming back into doing shows. Like, how how hard is that first show going to be in terms of like being out of breath and being able to actually <laughs> keep myself uh, upright? So yeah, that's going to be interesting. That's something that I've I've been I've been thinking about. I'm like, I better be really, really be preparing myself for when when I get back on stage because it's been a, it's been a hot minute for sure. And if it's a hardcore band, I mean, there's like, that's exhausting to watch. It's exhausting to be a fan in the crowd. Like you leave drenched in sweat. Anyway. Yeah. So like, it is going to be something yeah. like, you know, you're, you're not getting your normal reps in. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, it's like, you know, I, I, in in one sense, because I mean I love I just love aggressive music, but you know it's it sometimes I do think of like man I really chose like the wrong genre of music to be in when you know there's like kind of shoegazer music where you're like you could just fucking stand there and like it's totally acceptable you know what I mean like you could just be chilling and you're totally concentrating on your on your thing and like you're just in your zone you're just in your corner doing your thing. And it's totally acceptable. I just feel like if you did that in like, you know, in a high energy punk band, hardcore band, whatever, like that would just be ridiculous. It would just be absurd. But it's, you know, you know, it's definitely a lot more challenging, you know, to, you're basically getting a workout every time you hit the stage. So, I mean, yeah, it's definitely, yeah, sometimes I think about that. I'm like, when I see like bands that are just, you know, like kind of just groovy, chill bands and like, dude that's where it's at like that that is the, a rad vibe because you just don't have to barely do anything like you could just like just like it's no different than being backstage it's like you get on stage and, and nothing's changed as far as like you know energy level or <laughs> or uh you know sweat level so but you know i like what i like 
and you know I, I love it for 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 many reasons for sure but you know sometimes it's it is funny to just look at it from that aspect I mean, it's kind of hilarious what you just did where you were just nodding your head down like that is cracking me up because I've been to I've watched all sorts of variety of shows and I do like some of that music. But going to those concerts live is not not my jam. I want to be banging around yeah. with somebody crowd surfing and I'm an old man. I'm like, dude, no, I, I think I want to jump off stage. I don't know. Like I want to do all of it. I want to. I want to see the guitar yeah. player slinging or like jumping around and running across the stage and the league singer yeah. like just going nuts. It it fires me up and like I feel yeah. I feel energy for like weeks and weeks after the show. You know, like I saw Def Deftones was the first concert that I saw where I was like, "That's music!" Whoa! It was mm-hmm. it was there was such an energy in in that like atmosphere. Uh, and this is a long time ago. Like mm-hmm. I saw him way, way back. I was, you know, a teenager, and I'm like, man, that's awesome. I gotta, I gotta explore more of this. This is more of what I wanna, right? What I wanna do and uh, and listen to. And so that now when I hear music, I automatically get those feelings of like what the live show might be like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah, I, I definitely, I, I definitely try to do that too. And I listen to something, I definitely kind of picture like, what would this be like live or, you know, and, and definitely kind of want to get a vibe for what the live show is. And, and in fact, I mean, a lot of times when I listen to something, I do try to find some like, you know, YouTube footage of them live and stuff like that. Cause I, I'm always curious to see that aspect of it, you know, cause it, it definitely is a very, a very important part of it. And, and then also just can get, you know, get you psyched to see a band live, to kind of see what their show is like and see, you know, what kind of energy they put out. So for you, like yeah. you, you've kind of done quite a few different things and I don't know, like with your acoustic yeah. stuff and, and playing the different styles of music, which I totally dig. Like it's actually uh, something I enjoy seeing all the different sides and the talent of it. But do you get more energy from like, do you feed off the crowd's energy and something like what would be, I guess the hardcore band or the Briggs when you were playing live shows with that style of music, or is it kind of equal and different with the acoustic side of things when you're just playing something where people are kind of standing there and singing and all that good stuff? Um, yeah, I mean, I'd say that for that, you know, I, overall, I'd say that a band vibe, to me is 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 a stronger a stronger connection uh in in a lot of ways just in, in the energy and stuff like that um there are i i've had i've had magical shows of uh, acoustic shows that were really really special times and stuff like that uh that that definitely captured a different uh a different energy than than being than than doing loud music um but i would say overall all just like as it as as an overall take on it you know doing doing loud music to me is it has 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 had more of a profound effect on me in, in terms of the fun i've had on a stage but i have had some of those moments and there are certain aspects of it that are super fun and cool i mean one thing that i really like about doing acoustic stuff um, it's just the the freedom of being able to do it kind of anywhere, you know, and and that it's it's so self contained, and so I've had a lot of really cool experiences with that. Just like, you know, standing on a wall, like when I'm with one of my one of my favorite times actually was uh, I was playing a fest in Gainesville, and um, after all the shows kind of let out. We were, we, we started out, we were supposed to do a, um, during fest, there's a lot of different, you know, hotel room shows and all sorts of crazy shit like that. And, uh, we were supposed to do a hotel room show, but there was too many people that wanted to come. So we actually just set up like in the elevator area, uh, and started playing songs and then the security guard for the hotel was like, yeah, you can't set up a show here. Like, you know what I mean? He was cool about it, but he was just like, yeah, you guys got to take that outside. 
And so we went to the parking lot and there was just like a little planter thing with some, you know, just some plants in it. It was like maybe three feet high and stood up there with the acoustic guitar. And just before you knew it, it just kind of became this, this show. Like there was like hundreds of people and people were crowd surfing and it was like, and it was just with acoustic guitars and singing songs. And like, uh, you know, there were some other friends of mine there that we were, uh, dudes from Red City Radio and a few other bands and we were just in nothing tin and we were just like passing around the acoustic and someone would start a song and we'd all sing it. And, um, and that was just one of those really magical moments. It wasn't planned. It was just sort of like, you know, we just kind of got kicked out and started to set, set up in the parking lot of the, of the hotel. And before you knew it, we had like a full blown kind of show going on. It was really, so there, those are, and that's something you wouldn't really be able to do if you had a full band, you know what I mean? Like you, you wouldn't have something that was so spontaneous and kind of so, uh, you know, just flying by the seat of your pants. So I like those kind of moments are really cool and really fun. Uh, and I've had kind of like a handful of those, but I, overall, I definitely say being in a band is, it, it has a, has a more fun energy, but yeah. So there, there are certain certain things like that that I definitely would never, never trade as far as as far as those really cool moments and experiences. That's such a rad story. I'm just picturing somebody coming up the elevator and opening up the door to a bunch of people playing music in the little elevator lobby area of a hotel. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. And, you know, it, but it, what was, what I loved about it was just that, you know, the, uh, the, the security guard was just so cool about it. Like he wasn't like, you know, didn't come up and get all, you know, rent a cop about it. He just really just was like, yo guys, you know, you can't really do this here. Like, come on. <laughs> and we're like, okay, okay, we'll go outside. But, you know, like. But yeah, it was it was it was really funny just how it all kind of evolved. It went from like it's going to be in a hotel room, and then it's going to be in this area, and then it just ended up spilling out to the parking lot. There's some footage of that too. Like you know, I think you could probably YouTube that. You know, like Joey Briggs, Red City Radio Fest, or something like that. There's some fun. There's some fun fun clips of some people caught at that moment too, and it's it's really cool. It was really fun. It'd be really cool to see, and the, the fact that it just manifested organically like that, and you go out and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, that's so cool, man. That is such a rad thing. Yeah, it's definitely fun. So, you've got all these different projects going on. Um, what's, like, how is it managing all this stuff and expectations of tour and being a father? at the same time like you've got your kids here uh, and like and balancing these all these different jobs because i know people people might think that being in a band super easy like they might look at it from the outside i have learned from doing this podcast and editing and all these things i'm not good at that anything that you think is easy that somebody's making look easy they put a lot of time and work and effort and into it so um I'm just for curious. sure. I'm curious how you balance that part of your life with the kids and family life at home. Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely a challenge. Um, you know, I I it's just you know it's like it's a lot of like tag team with my wife. You know, it's like I've got this thing today and this and that and this and like we coordinate and we just try to figure it out day to day. You know, because like that's the thing too. It's not like it's like a a nine to five sort of like uh, the routine. So every day kind of changes, every week changes, you know? So sometimes it's, we get in a, in a better rhythm than other times. Um, you know, it is going to be interesting. Like if, if there are, you know, when those opportunities do arise and, and being gone might, it's going to be interesting because that I, I'm so, I am so used to being around and, and it definitely, and we, we're not really like prepared for it, but at the same time, it's like, it kind of always works itself out. I mean, there's definitely been times where I'm just like, how the fuck am I going to be gone for six weeks right now? Like, I don't know how, like how, you know, how is she going to manage all this on her own? You know, but somehow we just always make it work. But, but yeah, sometimes it, 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 it does seem overwhelming, but 
honestly, it just it just kind of always sort of figures itself out, you know. I don't know, it just does. But <laughs> the uh, you know, I mean, it's it's just what else can you do? You just got to keep kind of sorting it out. And you know, I mean, I'd say that definitely some things do have to things get pushed back, things get pushed around, and and you know, and and because of that too, though, you know, it's like because it's not it's not just a perfect ideal situation where I've just got, you know, all the help and freedom to do whatever I want all the time. It's like, I have to, it's a balancing act and sort of have to just play, um, juggle around everything at the same time. But such is life, I guess. Do the other band, do your other band members have like families and things like that at home that they have to juggle around as well? Um, some, some not, you know, it's like, I, it's like, I mean, Greg, um, back alley lecture, Greg camp, he and I are friends. We actually became friends through our kids. So we're kind of, we're actually, uh, we, we're like dad bros. So that kind of works out because we're, we're, our kids are really good friends and we're really good friends. So that, that, that aspects of it yes and my brother has kids as well um but like my my buddies that i'm doing you know uh vintage war with no like they're they're you know they're bachelors and yeah definitely that that that's easier for them i'd I'd imagine in terms of uh scheduling things but you know everyone still has their own things you know work and and uh and Derek is a is an avid hiker. He's like goes on like six to eight hour hikes like constantly. So, and and you're not allowed to like get in the way of his hikes. So, you know, we have to schedule things around that for sure. So he's like, it's God, so no. funny. And like he'll he'll kick me out. Like we're you know because we sometimes we'll just like we'll work on songs at, at his place, you know. And it's like you know it's ten o'clock. He's like I I gotta get up at five for a hike. So. Let's, let's we're done for tonight. <laughs> so, everyone's got the everyone's got their things that keep them busy. I have to go hike. You gotta, you gotta go. <laughs> I gotta get up early. Beat it. <laughs> it's so interesting so. to me. It's fascinating to see and like this wall broken down over time of the punk rock vibe and atmosphere of being only a certain way into like branching yeah. out of, this dude hikes you're a dad you've got kids and you do these other mm-hmm. acoustic projects and you have other things like life evolves into other things that you're always into them but before there was like this this attitude and you had to have and you're only going to be punk rock and that's it and and then you see guys yeah. uh you know you see people enjoying things like that and you're like, Oh, that's it. It's like, Oh, it is okay. Oh man. It's so good that that guy yeah. goes hiking because now I can let whatever enjoyment I get out of life, like shine out in public now. Yes. I, uh, I mean, it is, it is a, I think there is somewhat of a preconceived idea that there, that other people don't have, you know, normal things that they like or whatever in the scene or whatnot. But I also think that like, you know, and uh, I mean, for, for me, it's a little bit different too, just because like, I feel like, you know, 20 years ago, I don't think that, I I don't feel like, I didn't feel like it was as inviting, you know, like I definitely feel like you did sort of have to, not that you had to, but there was definitely an expectation that people sort of had to uphold this sort of, uh, this this uh, veneer of being super punk or uh, this kind of thing, and I, I feel like that sort of doesn't really exist as much anymore. I feel like people don't have that same expectation. I mean, it could also just be that I'm old, you know, and, and I'm older, and like you know, maybe twenty year olds that are getting into the scene still have that. You know, they maybe they do kind of do that to each other, where they're kind of like, well, that's lame or whatever. Maybe they do, but. It, to me, it seems different. Like to me, I, I, it seems like less uh, less posturing. I, it, it, that's just my my 
personal observation, it feels a little less postury than when I was kind of getting into things and when I was young and stuff like that, where I felt like I had to like, you know, try and be really cool and, and you know, be tough and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. Maybe it still exists, but it's not, I'm so far disconnected from that because it's like just not anything that I have anything to do with as far as posturing or pretending to be some macho punk rock dude or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's actually a thought that I had today when I was thinking about the podcast and going on was was uh, that I think it's the fact that a lot of it seems like like right at uh, I how old are you? I'm uh, thirty nine. So right at our generation, I'm forty. So like right in our time frame, right there, right what that the bands that I listen to are almost all of them are still going strong. Like they still make music and they're still yeah. popular, mm-hmm. and relevant in the scene. So there's more and more of that. It's not just like there's the Rolling Stones and that's an anomaly. It's literally like these these bands are staying together and they're not even acting old. It's like. Hey, we're older, but we're still yeah. doing the same things that we're doing and we're having fun and that's okay. And so that mindset, I was like, maybe it's because you get older and you go, that posturing was so stupid. Why did we do that? Why, why were yeah. we holding on to that stuff? Yeah. Like, well, and the fans too. Yeah. And, but it also, I mean, and, and I, I, it may be a generational thing. I, I do wonder about it because you know, sometimes it's hard to see things from from the perspective of of being older when you're not. But it does seem to me that that people are uh, acting younger. Hold on, this thing's super loud. Wow. Um, it seems to me that um, people like you know what I mean. That, like they you know, the 50s, the new 30 or something where like people that are older don't necessarily act that age. Like I feel like my parents were very, they were, they were old people by the time they were in their 30s. You know what I mean? Like not meaning, you know what I mean? Like they were, they acted older in the sense of like, you know, they had like very sort of what would be, I guess what, what our generation would consider normal for that age or whatever. And I feel like this day and age, you know, so many of my friends that are in the in the industry and stuff like that, who are some well above my age, you know, they don't seem that way. Not the way you would think of, wow, that's someone that's 50 years old. Like my my picture or my, you know, uh, thought of what a 50 year old would be when I was younger is certainly not what it is now when I'm and when all of my friends are in their forties or whatever. And we're, it's like, when there's nothing, nothing magically changes when you hit a certain age where you just all of a sudden change your mindset or change your kind of uh, the way you are, you know what I mean? Some people do, but for the most part, it doesn't have to be that way. And I think some, maybe some people just kind of realize that, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's always existed. Maybe there's always some people that gradually got more kind of conservative in the sense of just like being more like, mm, that's a lot loud or whatever. I don't know. But <laughs> it seems to me that that maybe younger people that people stay younger longer, uh, you know, in terms of their their mindset. It could just but be the people that again we're looking that at. at the same time. <laughs> Yes, that's true too. No, 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 for sure. There's definitely people that are, you know, that age that are, have uh, that do have that kind of more traditional age to themselves. But, but at the same time, too, though, on average, I'd say that probably less people own homes at, a, at the age that you know, say, our parents had, you know, owned homes and started families and and kind of the, some of the more traditional things. Or you know some of the the benefits of being older or whatever were yeah you know you have kind of gotten pushed back too because people are kind of living more younger person lifestyles of sort of like going out at night and not really have a, a career and you know whatever I don't know it it seems it seems on average that there is a little bit of a, a shift in terms of 
you know, the, the, the age people are and, and the age people act. It's really cool to see. I mean, should be wrong. I, I love it. Like I love seeing yeah. more people, you know, we talked about, Oh, I talked about Rick Thorne being on the podcast. The dude's, is shredding on his bike still and he's starting stand up and he's doing all these different things. You're not supposed yeah, to start new I ventures, right? You're not supposed to start new ventures when you yeah. get older. For sure. Yeah. Rick's a great example of that. I mean, he blows my mind because we actually, we, I, and we became friends like, I don't know, like maybe 10 years ago, uh, randomly. We, we met at a party. Uh, actually we, met before that we had met on warp tour and then we saw each other at a party and we're like oh i remember you from warp tour and um and then he was like i got this podcast like you you guys should come on and be on my podcast or whatever he had, at the time he was doing a podcast way before it was like everyone had a podcast um and anyways and then so yeah we kind of would go to each other's shows and hang out and stuff like that but the dude blows my mind though in terms of like the shit that he gets into like, I mean, he's just breaking himself constantly. He's like posting pictures. They all busted up. And you're like, Fuck, dude, like I'm like, like I would be just, I would, I'd be terrified to break like a bone, you know, like I don't do well with that kind of shit, but that guy just is like, ah, oh, shit, broke my collarbone again. Anyways, back on my bike, you know, it's just like, he's just like, he's machines nuts. Yeah, that blows my mind. And I love it. But that that's a good example of that. That's a really good example of a dude that just doesn't age, just keeps going like like he's fucking 20 years old. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I see that and I go, well, wait a second. I've wanted to do a lot of things in my life. So there's no reason I can't do it now. You know what I mean? Like I see him do it. Yeah, yeah. It's like a kid that watches, you know, somebody do a trick or something on the internet and they go, oh yeah, I can do that. I see an example of somebody, mm. you know, I think I'm pretty good at it. And then I see somebody like him or, you know, yourself, you, you just keep on like, f like keep going with the game of doing stuff in music industry and you right. know, you're a dad, but you keep these things going. And I go, huh, if he can do that, then what can't I do? Like, why am I putting up these walls yeah. or barriers for anything? Like that's just an excuse. I can figure out a way if I really want to do it, I can prioritize it and I can make it happen. Yeah. And again, I, th I think that also might be part of that sort of society thing too, where we sort of have made certain agreements that like, Oh, well, you know, once you get to this age, you settle down or this age is like, Oh, you know, having a so-and-so career is sort of more, during this period of your, of your life. And, you know, so like there are definitely certain things and certain uh, expectations of when you're supposed to stop doing certain things, I guess, is, you know what I mean? But yeah, it is all just bullshit. You know what I mean? It is all just kind of just some arbitrary number of just like, well, when you're 40, you shouldn't be starting a new band. Like that's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's just like, there, they, you know, there's just weird, weird things that we just kind of had to have agreed that are just, you know, what's acceptable and what's not at certain ages. Not just a new band, but like you're starting one and it's a hardcore band. Yeah, or <laughs> or starting comedy just out of nowhere. Like I'm gonna be a stand-up comic. Fucking cool, man. It, Rad. It, it is, man. You know it what is, I mean? Do your calling. That uh, totally. Totally. Even if you haven't done your calling until like right now, like you're 40 years old and you yeah. haven't done your calling, you figure something you like, like go for it. And I, I don't know why I didn't realize it before. Cause my dad like switched professions. He went back to school, got a degree and switched professions in his forties, you know, like just oh, did nice. like nothing and just decided to go off and do it. And you, I'm going, yeah. I don't know why you don't see that earlier. So when somebody ever says like, well, I'm just too old yeah. to do that. I'm like, Man, no way, no right. way. And so, I like it's one yeah. of the biggest things I try to say, like, it, uh, or the biggest thing that irks me is when people say that, like, I can't get a job there because I'm too old. Man, there's plenty of things for you to do. All you gotta do is try, man. Like, you're useful. I mean, you're not dead yet. People can use you. So, yeah. you know, you've got lots of experience. You can help people out. You can do anything you want to do. It's just you put up that meant people put up the mental blocker excuse saying like, uh, you know, I probably can't cause I'm too old. You know, I picked rollerblading back yeah. up, you know, I saw some rollerblades and now I'm having the nice. time of my life. Like I'm, I'm having a blast and I'm like, 
I'm not sure I should That's be awesome. the 40 year old out there with a bunch of like little scooter kids, but I am and I'm having a great time. And that's, I mean, I take the kids to the park and I enjoy having them there and, and showing them stuff and then helping them out. And so it just open like all these things with this podcast and talking to people like yourself has opened my eyes to like, there's so many walls you can break down to even yeah. when you're older. It doesn't matter. Right. Indeed. Well, man, uh, I guess this, this has been a blast. Thanks a lot, Joey. I appreciate yeah. it. Um, oh, yeah. Let everybody know where they can find all your stuff, uh, the new bands, and when the documentary is coming out, if you know, and all that good stuff. Yeah, well, the, unfortunately, I don't know when that doc's coming out. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be, be available soon. Um, probably within, I'd imagine, you know, in the next couple of months. But, but yeah, you know, Vintage War, I mean, following me on Instagram is where I usually do a lot of, you know, my stuff. And, and you know, I always, you know, show people what I'm up to on all different aspects. And then, you know, people can figure it out from there in terms of what they like and what they don't. So, but yeah. And, uh, you know, and that's, that's about it. I don't, I, I don't have a, a ton of websites or anything like that for people to come just find me on Instagram or TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> so what are the different bands again that you've got going on that are going to be like, you've got new stuff coming out. So we, got, we can look for them. So, so Vintage War is the is the hardcore band that um, we've got a new EP coming out this year, and um, and Back Alley Lecture, and uh, yeah, and Instagram is mainly is my main kind of place where I am, and both of those you can find on on Instagram. Cool, man. Cool. Well, Joey, thanks a bunch, man. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Chat with you later. <laughs>